people began to give me this reputation. I began to gain this reputation as like a class clown. And when it came time to actually getting my grades in order for a greater goal that I wanted, you know, it was really hard. And the reason why was because people expected me to fuck around. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Must Become YouTube channel. My name is Spencer and I believe that what can become, you must become. So I'm gonna jump right into this video today guys and here's honestly kind of really what I wanted to talk about. It's about reputation and I wanted to kind of delve a little bit deeper into what reputation is and what it can be and what kind of a tool it can be use it properly. I'll show you both the negative and then after I'll talk about the positive side. So as always though, before I kind of get into the content, if you guys like this content, please give me a like, comment, subscribe, anything like that. That way you can see anything that comes out from my channel that might be of value to you down the road. So let's take a reputation from a negative perspective to start really simply if people kind of think bad things about you they have poor opinions on you based on your past behavior you know then it's not going to be great in terms of connections you can make and whatever you can do in the world people that you might be able to come across and hang out with or whatever just generally associate with that's one thing that's kind of obvious but the other more deep side to reputation is that it's kind of like a self-affirming prophecy you've heard me talk in other videos about immersive environments and the thing is that your reputation is kind of this like environment that you're in that you don't really recognize has such a great impact on you so let me give you an example. You know, when I was back in high school, and actually a little bit before that, even like elementary school, I was like absolutely a class clown. I fucked around all the time. Um, the main things that I would have fun doing is just kind of like making noise at the back of the class or like me and my best friend, we would like take little pieces of paper, attach them to a rubber band and like shoot them at each other from across the room. And I'd always make jokes, sometimes even at the teacher's expense, which now I'm not proud of obviously, but I had a lot of kind of class clown activity going on. And what would happen is people began to actually expect that of me. So people began to give me this reputation. I began to gain this reputation as like a class clown. And when it came time to actually actually getting my grades in order for a greater goal that I wanted, you know, it was really hard. And the reason why was because people expected me to fuck around. Like people thought it was really weird if I wanted to, through my lunch break, do a little extra studying or read a bit of a book or whatever it was. And it was very difficult to actually break that habit of being a class clown. And part of it, yes, because it, you know, it was nice to be, to gain that attention and have fun with people and whatever, like, and I was in the habit of doing that. But the other part of it was, again, the expectations that I acted a certain way. And those expectations have a lot of power. And so that kind of brings me really to the positive side of reputation. And this is something that I'm really learning day in and day out right now in my life while I'm 27, some decade later, is that really reputation can be super powerful. If people know you as someone who works really hard or you always grind or whatever it is, then not only is that a nice reputation to have when you're trying to make new connections or network or do anything really in the world where people have a good opinion of you that precedes you actually being there. So people just think this of you without you even necessarily needing to be there. Not only is that valuable, like everybody knows that part of reputation knows that that's valuable for people to think highly of you and have a strong reputation. But what people don't consider is that second Second level, which is that your reputation actually encourages you to have better behavior yourself. Because now there's times where you might want to do something that, you know, might get you, you know, I've spoken in past videos about off the train when you're really on your good habit routine or, and all that kind of stuff. And you're really kind of doing everything you got to do throughout the day that's moving the needle for your life. It's really nice that when you want to do something that might be kind of destructive or whatever, that you have this reputation where people kind of encourage you away from doing it, or they kind of act a little bit odd when they think that you're doing something that's out of character. People are looking for kind of like almost like a social homeostasis. Like they want want things to stay the same and even and people feel uncomfortable when you do things that are very surprising or unexpected and so you got to use this to your advantage so i'll give you a quick example in our company the other day you know people that we had all been it was i think it was friday and we were all asking each other hey so what's going on the weekend what are the plans blah blah, blah just checking in with everybody and um you know i had said this is the first time in i don't know almost a year probably i had said um you know i'm actually going to a party and everybody in the company well everyone who was around said holy shit like no way like, you're going to a party like i don't believe you like what kind of party is this is this like a networking party or is this where you're gonna like all get together to like talk about discipline or becoming what you must become or whatever, right? Like, um, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but that's roughly kind of the whole idea. People were kind of shocked because my reputation is that I go to bed at 7 p.m. I wake up sometime between 2 and 3 a.m. And I even on my lunch break, like generally speaking, I'm working or I'm doing something. I have a very strict diet, all this kind of stuff. So it was, it was strange to them that I was going to a party. And, you know, so I clarified, I said what kind of a party it was. And, you know, it was exactly uh, the kind of party that you would expect someone to go to if they're going to party, which is I was going to a house party. It was actually a housewarming. Um, and I did that actually last night and you know same thing everyone was you know having drinks and smoking their weed and doing whatever and just having a good time doing whatever just relaxing of course i didn't indulge in that kind of stuff which is by the way not to say that you never should or whatever because there's totally times that i do believe that you know you should maybe relax a little bit if that's the way you relax that is what it is but that's something that i don't particularly indulge in myself anymore um if you guys are interested in hearing about that please ask in the comment 
out. Um, I'd be happy to talk about that, why and why not. Um, we just maybe something good or bad in your life. But yeah, so I ended up going to this party, but the point is, is that all the employees were so shocked. And the thing is, is that if I was the kind of person that really I shouldn't be going to the party. And you know what? I, I'll actually admit that like, maybe at this point in my career with what's going on in our business, that kind of stuff, like maybe I should have spent spent that time grinding. Maybe I should have. And usually I do. Like I, like I said, it's been almost a year since I really attended like a cr traditional party. The fact that they expected me to not do it and the fact that they were shocked was actually a great compliment. It gave me this extra pause where I asked myself like, do I want to go or do I not want to go? Because when they reflected that, that reputation that I have, when they reflected that to me and they were like, well, that's not something that you normally do. It actually made me feel quite proud. And now I'm not trying to say that, you know, no one should party and whatever. You need to build this like Spartan reputation. That's not what I'm saying. I usually do pride myself absolutely on my discipline. I think discipline is maybe the number one thing that gets you to where you want to go beyond motivation, beyond all these things. I think discipline is number one. And when they reflected to me that I'm a person of discipline and that it's surprising that I'd be going to a party again, I felt very proud because it made me feel like, wow, like that is, that is the, you know, the character select that I've gone through when you're going through that, you know, through that video game for those of you guys who play video games. It made me feel very proud that the character that in their eyes that I have selected is one who doesn't necessarily do that. And now look, I don't actually know what was going through their minds. They may have thought like, wow, you know, what a prude, what a square. I can't believe he's actually going to go to a party. I don't believe it because he always rejects anything to do with fun or social kind of just like something that isn't directly furthering a certain goal. Um, that might be what they were thinking. And it might just be the fact that I'm interpreting that, but still that's of value. To and again, that's like, at that point you get to, a, you get to this middle ground where you're looking at their view of your reputation and your view of your reputation. And as long as you can interpret it positively, then it is a positive thing. And so I just wanted to share that guys, if you guys have a negative reputation and the expectation is that you're always going to fuck around and you're not going to do things that help anybody or help yourself or further a mission, further a cause, become a better man, whatever it is. If you build that reputation, it's, it, it's a negative thing twofold. The first way is because obviously people just don't think that highly of you. But secondly, is it actually keeps you in that box. It serves to keep you in that box. And when you do want to change that behavior, when you get to a point, like rewind when I was saying I was a class clown, like class clowns are only funny for so long and then they're sad. You know, you get to a point where it's like, wow, you're 40 and you're still like the class clown is like, all you do is kind of reject authority and try and make cheap jokes at other people's expense or, or, or just fuck around being a child, right? That's not, that's not cool anymore. It's not funny. And so there does come a time where you want to change your reputation. You want to take it into your own hands. And I'm just saying that it's very important to do that as intentionally as possible and recognize that there will be adversity if you're going from something where people are expecting you to be funny or a jokester or whatever, um, especially if it's not productive. If that's what you want to do, then that's great. But if that's, if, if that's not productive to what you want to do, then recognize there will be that adversity. But on the other side, you know, the grass genuinely is greener, which is when you do flip that reputation into a very intentional thing. And this is also why this goes with, you know, my, my past video, which is basically about leaving certain people behind. There are some people who are going to hold you to that identity and hold you to those things. But the thing is, is that when you actually cross that level and get to a point where you're on the other side of the bridge, you can really use reputation as something to be this perpetual motor that just kind of keeps you moving towards the way you want to go. And I just had that experience for myself very recently. So I wanted to share that with you guys and share with you guys genuinely the power of reputation. I want you guys to go away and think about what kind of reputation you would like to have and then the steps that you need to take to make sure that your primary environment casts that reputation back onto you, you know, and that might be again, your family, your loved ones, your workplace, whatever it is, but you need to start that very, very, very intentionally. Um, if you guys want to know a little bit how to do that, I can make a follow-up video again. Always just ask me in the comments. Let me know if you guys are interested. Um, and I'll just wrap this up by reminding you guys that right now I'm doing a little bit more of an effort to be to give more documentation than creation. I'm not kind of thinking about, hey, what what steps, what great things are there to do that I've thought of that would have been nice if I knew before, something like that, um, and, and create content for you guys. I think the main goal right now is to really document the things that are happening for me in my position. Like I mentioned before, I'm a COO right now um, in a rapidly growing e-commerce company. It's very exciting. And so if there's any more um, kind of uh, information you guys want about anything in that world and like that, I'm happy to talk about that. But again, just want to share this with you guys so that you guys can kind of see my journey and see if there's anything you can pick up. Um, because I know there's so many people that I look at that are in a really great place that I look up to that are older than me, that have done more than me, have more experience than me, that I just wish they had this kind of online documentation where I could have gone back and seen their journey and maybe taken little nuggets. And it might not have even been the things that they were intending to share. Like I might not have given you any knowledge right now in terms of reputation, anything you didn't already know, but there might be something I said along the way that you can resonate with that will help you again, become what you must become. So that's it guys um please leave a like if you like this video comment down below i love interacting guys um subscribe and leave the notification bell or ring the notification bell rather because i would absolutely hate for a video to come out that could really really benefit you um and you miss it just because you know the algorithm wasn't doing its job and sending it to you when it should have so ring that bell and you can circumvent that um with that said guys i will leave you there again my name is spencer from the must become youtube channel and i appreciate you guys so much for watching take care